Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is a stand-up comedian who hosts the immensely popular podcast, WTF. Please welcome Mark Marin. <laughs> I should have should have brought my sunglasses. Um, yeah, pretty nice out here, isn't nice it? To see you, pretty buddy. bright. Yeah. We were just talking backstage that we go way back, but I have not seen you in years. It's been a while, yeah. For uh, reasons that nobody here would possibly know, uh, we we know each other from nineteen, damn ninety. When was it? When was it? Ninety. It was like ninety four. I was hosting a show on Comedy Central. I was hosting a clip show. Called Short Attention Span Theater. Sasty. Listen to listen to the applause of people that remember. Um, yeah, Short Attention Span Theater, and it was down on Twenty Third Street, and yeah. I was doing a show called my Ex first TV show called right. Exit Fifty Seven. Right, and there were a bunch of you. There was like seven or twelve yeah, or nineteen. Yeah, me, Amy Sedaris, Paul Danello, yeah, Jody Lennon. You were all in an office having a great time, and I was just on the next office over by myself brooding. Like, yeah, I'd hear you guys like, yay, we're going to do a sketch. And I'd be like, oh, God, my life sucks. Like, because you, know, you That was the sound of panic you were hearing from our offices. But it sounded... We did not know what we were doing. It sounded so fun, though, Stephen. You were so young and full of life. And... <laughs> Weren't we all, though? No, we I, was, all? I was filled with hostility and just horrible anxiety. Mm -hmm. But you guys seemed to be having a good time, and I always felt like uh, I wanted to be part of that. But you didn't let me. You, didn't, you never asked. You never I think I did hi. ask. You I never did, asked. I'd say, hey, come on, you guys, let me be on the fun thing. And they're like, no talk show, silly. You know, like, you know. Because that, that's what, like, that show Bill was. Bill so Maher like, was also in the same office. Well, he was, I, well, he was there he, for was uh, like, Politically Incorrect. It was literally, his office was next to mine. Yeah, but did you ever see him? I he know. wouldn't talk to me. Oh, I never saw him. I just saw pictures of him. I thought he was like a ghost. You know, like, you know, like, <laughs> Like, I knew the show taped there, but it was all, it was never, I never remember ever seeing him there. I felt like it I saw him walk down the hall sometimes. One, oh, you did? All right. All right. Remember Air America Radio, yes. your old gig? What I was remember the name of, it. What was the name of your show? My, uh, my show was Morning Sedition. It oh, was on right. at 6 in the morning till 9 in the morning. I used to get up at 2.30 in the morning to get there by 3 in the morning. Wait a second. I you... did your show. I know. I vaguely remember. It's I all like a dream. a 6 a.m. show. Yeah, it was all like a dream. That doesn't sound like me at all. You were barely yourself. Does that good, help? We, I had a good time. I remember that. Yeah, we did. We had fun. Do you miss talking about politics? Well, I still talk about it uh, a bit, but like I, you know, I'm I'm as uh, uh, scared and angry as the next guy. Yeah. I've become uh, I've become frightened of my phone. Like, why, why? Because you have a news browser. I have a news browser oh, right, on my right, phone, right, right, right. and you you wake up. You're like, oh, what did he do while I was sleeping? <laughs> like you like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you have that you have that moment where you're like, do I do I check it now or should I have coffee first? How's this gonna go? You know it's not gonna be good, right? There's there's not gonna be any point in the next three years where we're gonna open our news browser and go like, oh, everything worked out. It's just not gonna happen. But like I, for a while there at the beginning, I could not ind identify what that feeling was of that terror. Of, of looking at the news on my phone. Yeah. Because it, it, it was visceral. I could yeah. feel it. And I think it's probably akin to like a, an abusive stepfather kicking your bedroom door and to go, I'm burning the house down. And then he just leaves and shuts the door behind him. Uh -huh. And you're sitting there going like, oh, I should leave, right? Should I leave? <laughs> and the only thing that calms you down at all is, I don't think he knows how to work a match. The thing, the thing that's terrifying, though, is, like, all the news is pretty horrible if you have a certain mind. Sure. And, um, like, because, like, I, I, because I'm literally, I, sometimes I don't understand, you know, like, like, I, I literally every day go, like, I don't know what he's going to do next. And, and I don't think the people who voted for him know either, but I think their tone is different. But I, I think their tone is different. I'm like, I don't know what he's going to do next, but I think they're like, I don't know what he's going to do next, man. <laughs> this is crazy. And you're like, why the hell did you vote for him? And they're like, shut the hell up. And like, that's what he ran on. That is what he ran on. So that. Mm -hmm. Now, you yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're all right. No, no, go ahead. No, I, I want to ask you about your podcast, WTF, because you still you started this in your garage, right? Yes, sir. What? What? It's still in my garage. Really? Yeah, yeah. You, so you, when you interviewed look where Obama, you ended up. look where you ended up. 
in a nice, beautiful theater. I work out of my garage. I have a very short commute to work. When you had Obama on, yes. it was in your garage? Yeah, he came over. The president came into your garage? It was ridiculous. Wow. I couldn't believe it happened. I couldn't believe that we're... Because when, when, when I got the opportunity to do it, I thought, like, oh, I'm going to go to the White House, and my producer, Brendan's like, no, he wants to come over. I'm like, that's crazy. You know, because I live in a two-bedroom house. There's one bathroom, there's a garage, and now the president's coming over. It's not a casual drop-in, you know? I, I, I had to ask my neighbor if it was okay if, he, if we put snipers on his roof. Um, <laughs> And, nice. Well, well, he's That's retired. Nice. He's retired. He was thrilled. He's like, that sounds great. Something's happening, you know. Well, now you've got uh, you've got a new Netflix show called Glow. Yeah. Is second season? Second season? First, first, season, season? first season. The gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Which I remember. That was a right? real thing. Yeah, in the 80s. Explain right? to the, the the young people out there who the Glow were. In the mid 80s, there was a, a short-lived TV show that was a, sort of a response or a riding on the coattails of the initial wave of professional wrestling, and it was women. It was all women, and it was raw, they and were it was ladies. insane. They were ladies. Yeah. Okay. Fine. And this show. <laughs> This show uh, is based on that. It's a fictionalization of it, so it's not based on the actual lives, but mm -hmm. it is in the mid-'80s. It's me and 14 women uh, on a wrestling show. I play this sort of, like, uh, you know, down-and-out, cranky, uh, cocaine-addled manager-director, uh -huh. which was a stretch for me. And... Um, <laughs> Well, it's from the... When does it take place? What year? In the mid-'80s. Mid-'80s? Yeah. Well, we're about the same age, yeah. I think. Is like, uh, I graduated from college in 86. How about you? About that. Okay, so yeah. what do you, do you have to bring your memory of the 80s to this show for, you know, for verisimilitude? Well, sure I do. You know, like, because I, you know, I went to college, and then I went to Hollywood, you know, before I ended up back in New York yeah. and I, to be a comedian. And I did my graduate work in cocaine in Hollywood. And, um, oh, wow, wow. Yeah, it, it was intense. It was an intense course. It was a year. Uh, Masters, PhD. Well, you know, it all happens at once. There, there's no, like, when, when, you're doing, when you're studying cocaine, it all comes, and then, and then eventually you're psychotic and you have to leave and stop. So, so it's been a long time since I did any drugs. You know, I'm almost 20 years uh, clean and sober. But the funny thing was, thank you. But, but here's, here's where it paid off, right? So I, I, I get cast as this guy. Mm -hmm. And, he, he, you know, he's a cocaine guy. You know, and I know about cocaine. So <laughs> the women that created this show, like, I had a lot of ideas about this guy, but I was very specific about one thing. I walked up to these women, Liz uh, Flayhive and Carly Mensch, the creators, who were kind of nerdy women. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not an insult. They, they'd admit to being nerds. So I walk up to him, I say, look, this guy, he, you know, he's, he's a user. He's, he doesn't share his Coke, no vials, all right? He's a user. He keeps it in a bindle that's usually a cutout square from a magazine, and he does it with a pen top or, or with a key. That's it. And these two women look at me, and then Carly says, we're so glad you're here. <laughs> Saved on consultants. Well, great to see you, man. Good Thanks for you, being buddy. here. Glow comes out this Friday on Netflix. Mark Maron, everybody. We'll be right back with performance by Jason Isbell.